Welcome to Represent Asian Projects Conversations. I'm Madeline Chung, and I'm joined by two incredibly talented writers, Cherry Shiva and Teresa Shao. So let's kick things off. Three words you would use to describe Joyride. Ooh, oh boy, between the two of us? Okay, well, we only have to do 1.5 words each. No, 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 three, no, three words, words each. each. Oh, God. Each. Now okay. we, it's twice as much work. Okay, go, 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 go. Are, go should, should I do one and then you do one so I'm not gonna steal a word? So I feel like we're oh, all okay. the same words. It is, and then, and then the other person's left high and dry. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Right, right, right. Um, okay, so, uh, funny. <laughs> Such a boring, that's a boring one. That's a really boring one. I feel bad about it. No, no, take it. That I'll take it, I'll take it. I'll take funny, like, whatever. Um, um, raunchy. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> it's like word association. Um, heartfelt. Look, I'm going to go, I'm only going to heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. horny. I'll take it back the other way. Yeah. Love yeah. that. We were I'm both like... thinking horny to start. Yeah. Don't, weren't you? Yeah, yeah I, mean, I was thinking course, horny. Obviously. I love the juxtaposition, too, between going from heart to horny. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> Here, here's the thing. That's what the movie does. So honestly, it is top of mind. Heart to horny, back to heart to horny. Yeah, okay. yeah that's it's, it's a whiplash effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have. We need one more word. Last word. One more word. Oh, oh gosh. Um, hot. Mm. In many ways. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Um. Oh, I'm doing one more. Um. Um. Successful. Manifest it. Manifest yes. it. Manifest yes. It. I think yes. so. I think so. Okay. So let's get into the origin story and how the story itself came to be. Well, when Cherry and I first got our pussy tattoos, we were like, we should write a movie about them. Yes, yes and, 100%. Um, no, we uh, we started because we uh, were all friends with Adele Lim, um, and we were just friends. We were have dinners at our house, and we are like, it would be fun if we just kind of like wrote a movie together. Uh, and we would, you know, again, it sort of started as a lark, of like, oh, it would be a fun movie to write. Like, it would be a fun movie to see, like, that we would have liked to see growing up. Mm -hmm. um, as kids, so maybe not kids, maybe like teenagers. You know, you know, or yeah, yeah, kids, kids to be sneaky, kids if we if we snuck into Sn the yeah, sneaky kids. Um, and so we would just like put these beats on a board mm -hmm. and hang out at our house. Um, and then we were like, well, we should actually write this now. Uh, so Cherry and I went off and wrote the script. And again, we never thought anyone would actually make the movie, so it was just mm -hmm. kind of for us. Um, but we ended up getting some producers on board, Point Grey, and they're incredible. Yeah. And then they were like, yeah, we think we can sell this to Lionsgate. And we were like, Lionsgate's not gonna buy this. Mm -hmm. And they did. And then we got to produce it, which is which is amazing. Because it literally was something that started as just a bunch of friends sitting around, and then as two friends sitting around, type and type, ha, 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 this, we have day jobs, this is just, this is <laughs> This awesome. is how we type, we, this, this, this is how we is, type, 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 this is what it looks like, we're yeah, recreating like it right now. <laughs> but it literally was, it's like we're TV writers, we both have day jobs, this yeah. was something that we were doing on the weekends for, uh, just, on a lark, and then suddenly here we are in, in prep meetings and, and taking, you know, taking heads of department interviews and things like that. Um, after having signed on as producers of the movie as well, we were just like, okay, it's, it's going full steam ahead. Yeah. I want to talk about how this movie is really kind of redefining how we've seen Asian women traditionally in media because, as you said, it's very horny, it's very raunchy, it's all of these words, <laughs> heartfelt at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I'd love to kind of know what your experiences were, you know, as Asian women growing up and what are the first kinds of representations of Asian women that you remember seeing? We, Margaret Cho, always yeah. key, yep. key, key, uh, I mean, that was the thing. And the thing is, sometimes you only need one, because it was just like, oh, Margaret Cho's doing it. Well, at least one person yeah. was able to do it. So yeah, maybe maybe another Asian person could do it someday. Um, always nice to have to have more. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully after seeing this movie, you know, the kids of today will have seen more um, and be even more inspired. But yeah, that was, that was kind of, that was, she was definitely one of, one of the main inspirations in the beginning. Growing up, I mean, a lot of the movie is kind of based on how we grew up. Like, we're both from small towns that didn't have a lot of other Asian people. I think you had one other Asian girl. Yes, her name town. was Lisa, and we had rhyming names, so people got us mixed up all the time. Oh, no. But we were just immediately, like, best friends because we were just like, oh, we're both Asian. Yeah. And that was kind of our, Cherry and I, our experience, too, when we sort of saw each other on Family Guy. It, we were the only two women, the only two... Uh, writers of color and we're both Asian and we're like we just locked eyes and we're like hold on <laughs> to be best friends. Yeah. It's funny how like you always kind of look for that other person, right? Because I imagine to be, you know, the only woman and not only the only woman, but the woman of color in a room on like such a big show like Family Guy would kind of be intimidating and I wonder if like you ever had those fears of, you know, maybe not being taken seriously or not being able to get like the right type of work. Could you kind of explain those experiences? 
I mean, I think you're always paranoid, even just from the job that we have, which is which is writer. It's like at any given point on any job, you might you might be out of work. Your show could get canceled. You know, it's always it's hard no matter what. Um, it was it was definitely a thing where I. I, before Teresa came, I, I had a couple years where I was the only woman mm -hmm. on the entire staff. And at that point, I had been there long enough that maybe I wasn't too paranoid anymore about not being taken seriously because I'd been there, I'd sort of done my time, I was friends with everyone, people knew me, and I'd um, written episodes by then. So, like, the job part of it was fine. But mm -hmm. when Teresa showed up, it was one of those things of just like, oh my God, you know, like, like sometimes you don't know what your what you're missing until until it actually shows up and when I started at Family Guy I had Alex Borstein so that was nice but she left and then later on I had Elaine Coe and then she left so then when Teresa came I was like thank you thank you I'm you know what I mean I have a friend again is back it's nice it's all two women yay mm -hmm. um, but it was it was very nice and it was obviously very nice to Cherry because she could have been there and she'd be like I want I want to be the only one and she could have bullied me right and I, she did no I'm just kidding there's here's the thing there's no way it's like like if anything again again and Teresa Teresa would would bully me if we were a fight, physical fight, I'm dead. Like, I'm not I would even, kill her. It would literally, <laughs> yeah. she's from Boston. I'm, I'm over. It's murdering over her. for me. So honestly, thank you for not bullying me. Like, I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> Every single day. You should be glad I'm the not punching you in the face. The fact that I'm still alive is a miracle. It's truly, I don't even know how, how, did, how she does it. Yeah. yeah. You can tell that you've been good friends for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there are some very wild scenes in Oh, really? Oh, um, no. That's a nice really? way to put it. Okay. There's wild. That would have been a good word. Yeah. A very uh, climactic okay. scene. Yes. <laughs> yes. Without yes. getting, you know, yes. too into it. And, you know, we're really seeing these friends owning their sexuality, which is, again, not something we see Asian women in media doing, at least historically. It's almost like they are sexualized, they are the dragon lady, they are this and that. There's so many stereotypes I can go into. I don't even want to. Yes, we know. We know. I don't have to explain answer, it to you. Totally. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but I mean, like, why do you think that's so important to have women owning their sexuality presented in media? I think so much of what we've seen in the past has been other people telling our stories. Mm -hmm. And this time it was great because we were like, we want to be able to tell our own story. And in this way, we just want to tell an authentic story and a fun story. And we weren't thinking necessarily like, oh, with this movie, we're going to be making a statement. We're going to be making mm -hmm. a manifesto or anything like that. We were like, we want to write a really fun, stupid movie uh, about us and our friends. and things will happen to these characters. Sometimes they will be a little wild, but they are gonna own every minute of it. They are going to be the protagonists of their own story and the people who instigate the comedy and also some of the wildness that comes around. Yeah. And so obviously I think that's really powerful. Of I think that was a credit to Point Grey, our producers, to Lionsgate who said, hey, we believe in you three as filmmakers mm -hmm. to come in and tell your story and to be unapologetic about it. And we're like, I think a byproduct of that is it's really nice to be able to see these Asian people really owning their sexuality and being like unapologetically raunchy. Yeah. Here's the thing. Anytime an Asian person has sex in our movie, it's because they were like, I want to have sex. Please come have sex with me. This was my idea. And that's basically just we, we wanted to write characters who were owning it and who were loving it. And that's super important because, again, it's like historically that's not what we see. And I love this idea, too, of just like, you know, owning your story and them allowing you to unapologetically tell your stories. Um, is this kind of like the first time that that's really happened for either of you? Well, I think I got I got lucky enough because um, I got to do a show with Aquafina yes. called Nora from Queens on Comedy Central, and so that was the first time I'd ever been in charge of something where it's like, oh, I get to mine my own life and my mm -hmm. friends' lives for stories where I can see that on TV. So that was really an exciting moment because before that, I'd always be writing for people who didn't look like me, mm -hmm. and that was fine. But to actually be able to do that, and Cherry was also. Um, on our staff, and so we were able to write for for Nora in that show, and that was the but that was the the first moment, and you know that was back in 2019 we started the show, and so like getting a little taste of that, we're like, oh, we want more, mm. we want to tell more stories, mm -hmm. like this is so great, we want to do it again and again and again, and I think that was something that we didn't really know was a possibility. I think we had always like been in staffs where it's like, oh, hey, you write for this you know family in Rhode Island, right. hey, you write for th these people. And you don't realize like how much of a like, oh wow, like to be able to like call up my mom and be like, hey, can you translate this for me? Cause I want to put it in the show. Yeah. It was like really cool. Yeah. 
I was really excited. My mom be like, oh my gosh, you know, like, yes, I will translate ass for you, you know, like crazy. What about you, Terry? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I, oh gosh, I would say even, okay, maybe it's not as, I'm gonna say as recently as 10 years ago, not recent, but that's the thing. It's like, there was a time when, say you sold a pilot and it was, and it was based on people you knew, but like, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, they would be like, yeah, cool, and maybe, you know, this is great, write your story, don't necessarily specify that the leads are Asian, because we never know what's gonna happen in casting, and I think what has happened um, as time has gone on and today is, is they do want you to be specific. They, they you know, we wrote our, this movie for specifically Asian characters, and at no point was it ever something that was like, oh, maybe we'll just cast, you know, whoever. It was like, no, we always knew that the, the leads were gonna be the Asian characters mm -hmm. that we wrote, and I feel like, Genuinely, I mean, even saying it out loud, it sounds weird to say now because they would never do that now. But like, you know, fairly, fairly recently, it was a thing of just like, we, yeah, we'll just see. You know what I mean? We'll just see who we get when we cast. We don't know if if it comes around to that. So it's nice to know that we're in an atmosphere today where that is not something that would happen. Like, if you specifically wrote a story for specifically Asian characters and for an Asian story, there's no question. It'd be like, yeah, no, we're going after an Asian cast. Yeah. I also love what you said, you know, about the characters being kind of messy, but they own it. And I think that's so important because typically with Asian representation, what we've seen is like, it almost plays into that model minority myth, or it's like you kind of have to be a specific way. But it seems like we're going towards more authentic representation, which is, you know, this is pretty authentic. <laughs> it's your friend's this, stories, right? Yeah. So like, what are your thoughts on where the industry is going in terms of this type of representation for Asians? slowly in a positive direction. Hopefully yeah. this just becomes more and more. Like I think Crazy Rich was something that really made it possible for movies like ours um, and movies like Everything Everywhere and TV shows like American Born Chinese, you know, all of those have, have come later. But sadly, let's face it, it's because Crazy Rich Asians was a giant hit and money is still the thing that talks in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, but yay, it did talk. Um, it did open some doors for the rest of us. So hopefully we can just keep on having those doors continue to open as we have more and more successful projects. And we I just want more. Yeah. We're greedy and we want more <laughs> and we want to be able to have a show that flops and they'll be like, continue, keep making that show. Keep making another show just like it. It's not like every movie or every show needs to be the be all end all. It like doesn't have to have the burden of like, oh my gosh, if this one flops, then we'll never make a show with Asian people again. So I think that would be a great barometer for success of just having a huge flop. Hopefully not this one. Right. Not this <laughs> not one. This. Something else can flop. Yeah, Definitely. I want to do something later that flops huge hard. Huge failure in the future, in the far future, yeah. and then and then be fine because the whole point is it could fail, and then be like, no, that's great. Just do another one. Here's some more money. Our like, next okay, thing great. will have fail. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. No. About, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it, but a couple years from now, you know. Yeah. I love that you point that out though, because I think that's something that's so top of mind for so many Asian creatives. If it's like okay, I get this job, I have to do a good job to prove myself and to do well for everyone else, otherwise we're not gonna be afforded these opportunities anymore. And I feel like it's just so yeah. top of mind. Yeah, it's a pressure that we don't want. So hopefully as we get more quantity out there, it'll be a pressure that has taken off any one single show or creator. Yeah. I wanna talk about the heart of the movie because well, first of all, I thought the movie obviously was going to be funny, but it was so smart. Like, the way you did it was so, so smart. I love how you made us not the butt of the joke, but part of the joke. Like, there's so many instances where it's like, oh, yeah, like, people would have said this to us, but we're kind of reclaiming it. So let's first go there. Like, how did you kind of navigate that? Because I imagine it might be hard for some people to, to reclaim that something that could have been so painful to them, but to turn it around and flip it and be like, no, 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 like, we're part of this now. <laughs> yeah, we never wanted it to be like, oh, this is a tragedy. There's, you know, this is trauma or anything like that. I think so much of this, again, we were coming from a point of we are comedy writers and we wanted the movie to be funny. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, like tragedy plus time equals comedy. <laughs> and so I think with that time and with wanting to make it just the funniest movie possible, we're like, we don't want to sit there and watch something sad. Yeah. We want to have it be funny and joyous. Um, and raucous and you know I think a lot of the comedy comes from you really caring about the characters like you are emotionally invested in the journey that they're all going through and they're all going through very different journeys mm -hmm. but I think so much of that is a credit to our actors of really taking these characters making them believable making them grounded making them people that you really want to root for and then all the comedy after that is so easy because they're just so like they're people you root for and yeah. the jokes are funnier because you care about them and I love also how like 
typically in these funny raunchy movies that are from a white person's perspective, the people of color are like the ones who are, you know, being made fun of. But we really see in this movie that it's like the white people that you're making fun of, which I appreciate. So thank you for <laughs> that to see, okay, yeah. to see the tables <laughs> turned. Um, but back to the heart, you know, there was that one super emotional scene that had me sobbing. And I wonder like why was it important to have heart in the story as well, as opposed to just making it a funny raunchy movie? It just feels, and this is gonna, this maybe sounds a little like, duh, but it's just, that's the thing, it's like a movie is a story. It should feel like an actual story that has a beginning and middle and end. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, you have to get that by having a character go on a journey that actually, that people care about. Like, yes, jokes are funny, great, but if you strung together like 90 minutes of just laughs, great, maybe people had a great time, but it just doesn't, it feels different. Like like literally walking out of a theater in your heart, it feels like a different experience if it's just kind of more surface, so that's why we wanted to make sure to dig a little deeper. Like mm -hmm. we wanted to have people come out of the theater like buzzing with energy and I just had such a great time with my friends, but the undercurrent of that is like, is yeah, like, you know, sometimes it's nice to like cry with your friends in the mm -hmm. theater as well and have something to talk about on a more serious level afterwards. So we definitely, definitely wanted to hit both. Mm -hmm. If I may dig a little bit deeper, if we're talking about that. <laughs> I think a big theme for me that I saw in there was belonging, mm -hmm. right? So of course we see it with Ashley's character feeling like she doesn't belong, she's in a white family and she's trying to find her roots. We see it with Deadeye who's like, can't really find friendships and is like looking for an online community. So I'd love to kind of know your experiences about belonging and you know, if you felt a sense of belonging in your life and maybe how has that shaped you both professionally and personally? Yeah, I think, you know, growing up, I grew up in a small town outside of Boston, and again, one of only two uh, Asian people in my class, and I remember feeling like, oh, I want to fit in with all my classmates, and really feeling like I'm going to kind of push away this Asian identity, mm -hmm. uh, and really embrace, you know, kind of like, oh, it, the, the pressure to assimilate really was like brought upon me. Um, not not by anyone of just but like I want to make friends and I want to I want to learn what CCD is and I want to go to church and uh, I didn't do all those things by the way <laughs> I did take communion once but I wasn't supposed to um, but you know there were just elements of my I guess being Asian where I was just like you know what I'm good I'm we're not gonna like embrace that part because just that's just not what everyone else around me knows so I definitely feel like at least for me it was like very much connecting to Audrey's story in the sense of like you really want to be the best version of yourself because you want people to like you, mm -hmm. but you also have not embraced an element of your personality that I think as you get older, you're like, wow, the community around me is incredible and I really should kind of really lean into it a little bit more, um, but it's not something I did growing up. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely, there's aspects of all the characters that sort of we relate to, but um, for, for me, for sure, it was it was like, oh, I feel like, we feel, we feel seen by different people, and I was like, oh yeah, oh no, that's me. Yeah. May I ask how you got to that point of like, you know, going from assimilation to like kind of pushing that part away to being like, no, I actually want to embrace this, and now I'm like writing stories about it, and you know, helping shape how, how Asians are viewed by the world. Yeah, I think part of it too was just um, being in the industry and like, you know, going to college and meeting people who are like, oh, you meet other Asian people. You're like, they're kind of cool. <laughs> oh, I like them. They're cool. Um, but part of it, too, was just being in the industry and realizing, I was like, no one's telling our stories. Or if our stories are being told, they're not being told by us. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that they're not, like, really, truly, authentically by us and for us. Mm -hmm. And thinking, like, hey, that is something that I want to do. That's something that I feel like we need. Um, and just knowing more people in the community and feeling like, wow, I there's an un, unsaid things like they just understand me in some ways, um, and so that was really important to me when I got there. I was like, oh, and then being able to have the opportunity to actually tell the stories, I was like, oh, I will never stop doing this. Mm -hmm. I will now, now, now we've unleashed, unleashed something. <laughs> the beast. The, the beast. Unleash the beast. Yes. What about you, Terry? That's, I mean, that's the same thing. I think uh, it, Teresa said, it's like, it kind of has to do with quantity. It's like, mm -hmm. as you get to know more and more people, you know, in our industry, it's like, like we, who is, I mean, we like, like just, just thinking about like the people, the last time we had a strike, how many Asian writers were walking the picket line? Oh my God, 15 years later, oh my God, they, we, mm -hmm. we could have a special picket, Asian writers picket. And it was lit, it was crowded. There were so many people there. It's, it's, it's numbers and you feel, and you feel more, 
I'm more confident and just comfortable when when you when you do have a community, even you know within the larger community. It's like, oh, our little like TV writer community is actually so much bigger than than it was in the past, and yeah. that's been amazing. I remember going from um, from you know working on Family Guy and and the Oroville to working on Aquafina's Nora from Queens, and that staff the first season was all women, um, a bunch of other Asian people besides me, and I was like, oh my god, this is. I'm so relaxed now. It was like the first time. It's like you don't know necessarily. And not to say that like writing on those other shows wasn't a great time because it was, but there was just a sense of like, oh, I don't have to explain anything. It's shorthand, 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 shorthand. I'm going to say this joke that maybe is very specific. And you know what? Other people are actually going to get it. Instead of being like, oh, yeah, that, what is that? <laughs> just explain, you know, I don't like not having to explain. Guys, we're tired. You know what I mean? It's now we have to use less words when, when we're with, with other people. So, so that's been nice. I get it. The explanation is exhausting. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah working as a journalist before and writing for like publications who mm -hmm. were just like oh those stories that you want to tell are too niche like and then you know having to explain all the stuff I'm like I'm tired of explaining yeah. to everyone guys I just, life is exhausting already right? we on. just want to live <laughs> I just want to talk about you know my lived experience with other people who have the same experience exactly. <laughs> <Touch that. Yeah. laughs> what do your friends think of you know you telling their stories in this way especially when they are hard R stories at some point oh well I mean <laughs> Every, obviously, all of all our the friends stories, have pussy tattoos as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So all of they're the, delighted, all, no. Um, yeah, <laughs> all the stories, obviously, there are elements of our friends, but it's not like their stories. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's definitely like there are character traits from our friends, us and our friends, that are in the characters, but nothing in particular was like, oh, this is a story that we've stolen from our friends that we're now going to put on screen. Uh, so n none of our friends, to our knowledge, yeah, have... Yeah tattoos people mm. people um, are feeling seen but they're not feeling attacked so we're, we're treading that. that middle ground that middle yes. ground right there I sweet love spot that. Yeah. being seen and not feeling attacked yeah I need to, I need to, that's that's the headline <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, final thing what do your parents think of all of this they have not seen the movie yet they're seeing it tonight couple hours from now so we'll we'll see we'll see what they think yeah my dad refused to come to the premiere not because he doesn't support me but because he wanted to stay at home with my cat um which is fair which That's is fair cute. but i think he also i think it's probably good that he's not here because we, we you know. genuinely we genuinely do not know what's going to happen i have warned my parents like this is this is a rated r movie they're like yeah yeah rated r i'm like rated r like rated hard r you know and and they're like, yeah, it's a movie, we get it, but I don't know if they get it. Like, we're, they might not get it till they see it. Is that's the thing? It's, it's gonna some, be. It's got some stuff you haven't seen in other rated R movies before, so we'll see. I full on screamed at some part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and our parents might scream. We don't know. We don't yeah, know. What's gonna yeah, yeah. If you see, yeah, if you see sort of an older woman in her sixties walk out of the theater, you'll know that's my mom. Yeah. Well. See what happens. I feel like. But luckily, we can blame the other one, which is nice. Yes. Um, you know, it's just like, oh, what was that really disgusting part? Ah, Teresa wrote it. You know, that kind of thing. Said far away from Teresa's. Mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really and and then I'll obviously blame Cherry because she is yeah. grosser than me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I'm the disgusting one. Per you know. Yeah. yeah. Each we're we're both disgusting. Yeah. There was one more I forgot to ask. Oh. I heard it was called Joy Fuck Club. Originally. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, <laughs> tell me the story of that and why it had to be or why did it change? Well. No. You know, obviously we love and revere the Joy Luck Club. I think that was such a seminal book and obviously movie. Um, it was always kind of like a tongue-in-cheek title, like Joy Luck Club, when obviously there's elements of raunchiness, there's the four. Um, but, uh, you know, we're never going to be able to put the F word in a title. I'm saying the F word like I'm so, like, classy. Oh, like, like oh, you the literally F -word. just said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the F word, I would never say oh, something. Oh, that's what we did. Mom and dad, we're too, we're too, you know, shy. Uh, but I think having a, a, a profanity in the title was going to be hard. Um, also, apparently, it's the name of a porno. So, uh, you know what I mean. So we're not, we're trying to not get too mixed up mm. with some, you know, like maybe, maybe just a little bit of crossover, possibly. But yeah. yeah, not too mixed up with it. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. want to save that title for the porno. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That we're gonna write. Yeah, that just kidding. Right. No, we're yeah. Cherry, <laughs> Cherry's gonna write it. She's yeah, because I'm the, I'm the disgusting one. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> then what are you? She's the disgusting one. I'm the heartfelt, emotional one. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> That's why we have to be horny. Exactly. <laughs> Except when we're talking to yeah. my parents, in which case I'm that you know yeah, the we emotional flip. one, we and Teresa's the monster. So yeah. I yeah. Her. Well, thank you for this interview. Thank you for the movie. Honestly, like, I feel like again, this is something I would have wanted 
as a teenager too, instead of seeing all these other movies that, you know, didn't show my experiences or didn't show people who looked like me being so wild and being so crazy and being so raunchy and horny. And I think it's just going to be such a huge hit. And thank you, thank you, thank you for everything. Like, it really means a lot to have a movie like this, truly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Stop. Thank you. No tears, no tears. 